Good evening and welcome to the movie lighthouse Halloween Spectacular. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> It's Halloween again. Would you it, believe again. it? I don't. Yeah. It's, I'm trying to figure out, is this our fifth, sixth one? I I'm going to say number seven, but I've got to have fifth. to check back on the Piss records. Off. Yeah, anyway, be. I do know it's episode 70. That's seven zero. Ooh, All right. Well, that's good in lots of ways, isn't it? It all makes isn't sense. It? Yeah. Well, anyway, welcome to the lighthouse. Now, just to explain to um, if anyone's listening out there and this, this is your first visit to the lighthouse, it's normally helmed by the uh, capable, personable, quick-witted chicken charmer <laughs> known as James Berg sat right in front of me here. However, each Halloween you're cursed with me managing the light switch. So do write in with your complaints after the show, not during, because obviously we're otherwise disposed okay you can find us on facebook twitter insta wiggle uh, right. at the movie lighthouse so any complaints any grievances please direct them to those kind of channels all right i'm not sure you can find us on twitter or instagram but we should you try can you can you can oh, really yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i saw us there yeah Great. yeah someone did it weren't oh, us. Nice. Um, right. you may also have noticed that there is a large hole in the room uh, and that, again, to the more seasoned Lighthouse listeners will know that we, we lost our Windy Cream. So well, that's our on, Windy he's Cream. He's not dead. He's not, let's be clear. Well, this is it. He, he, still... went, he, 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 he jumped ship and went to another bloody podcast. That's just what you reckon. Apparently, there's been sightings of some figure of Twilight <laughs> foraging in shrubberies. Eating raw like albatross. <laughs> that's what we hear. Um, so anyway, in the attempt of catching him one day, oh, we've wow. made we've made the the windy cream hole. We bait it with things that we feel might lure him in. Cocktails, cocktails, <laughs> like paperbacks, <laughs> Spy- paperback. paperback novels. What else could it be? Cornish pasties, but Cornish it's... pasties, Martin Clune's sticker <laughs> album. <laughs> so basically, yeah, no expense spared to lure him in. So. Do you think it's time we should have a little look down the Wyndham hole? Yeah, let's have a peer. See if we've caught caught anyone. Before we do that, though, obviously there's a jingle for the hole. So I've forgotten how it goes, but it's like a little something like I this. I think it was pretty tubeless. Yeah. It's, oh, oh yeah. It's been de- Oh, yeah, it is. De- yeah. Wyndham's hole. It's Wyndham's hole. Is anyone stuck in Wyndham's hole? Is Wyndham stuck in his own hole? Oh, yeah. Ah. Wonderful. Wonderful work. It didn't actually go like that. It went completely different earlier, but I think... Let's have a look. Let's have a shout. It's the nerves. Why don't you shout um, with that deep shouting echo of yours? Let me see what... Hello! Is anyone down there? Hello? Hello? I think I've a lady. Hello, hello, hello. And like, grab what? onto the rope and we'll winch you up. Please, I need to help me. <laughs> right, here we go. And oh. it's, it's Wendy Bagley or Zaza Bagley. How do you want to be known, Zaza Wendy Bagley? Wendy's cool. <laughs> Wendy Bagley. Round of applause, round of applause. Someone clean ah. up all that mud. Yeah, sorry, if, sorry, you were stuck in with themselves such a long time. Thank you for joining the podcast. Yeah, are you excited yeah. to be here? One hundred percent, fantastic. <laughs> so yeah. about, I thought it was about time that we got like a a slightly younger demograph and a slightly more female one. Yeah, come on. You know, I have been to- totally representing all this time, though. Let's be fair. But young people are the big thing these days. I mean, oh yeah, the young. They can only yeah, focus for ten that. minutes, but um, but we'll we'll get her, or we'll keep her, we'll keep her, keep her focused. Yeah, see stay in do. the room. Enjoy see the ambience. Yeah, 
see how it goes. See how we go. It. Yeah. So um, that brings yeah, us well. smoothly onto the news. Oh, news. The please. news. Does anyone of you fine people have any movie news worth talking about? Um, hmm. no. no, it can be really. done. I haven't got any really. We have... Well, have you got any, Laurie? Lucky for you, it's my Halloween spectacular episode, and I've got news. Oh, nice. I don't work. know if it's particularly interesting. Here we go. Ready for this? Yeah, go on. I'm going to go. Bong Jong Ho, no Bong Jong Ho, has you confirmed. Are. Bong Jong Ho, he's the guy who did Parasite, right? That dude. Oh right, okay. Post, yeah. So he's confirmed that he's got final cut on Mickey Seventeen. Heard what, of that? What the Mickey hell? 17? No, I have not heard of Mickey Seventeen. Mickey Seventeen, I think it's coming out early next year. You got um, what's his name? Patterson, Robert Patterson. Batman. Anyway, that. Batman. Yeah, yes, Batman. Basically, Batman is I kind of seen like a future world and he keeps dying. That's as far as I've got with the premise of the film. Looks quite interesting. Obviously, Bong Jong Ho uh, is the director. He's been given final cut on it. So his baby will be his baby. And it looks quite good. Mickey 17. So there's that piece of news. Okay. You thought any any news yet? Uh I've got more. Not really. Yeah, go on, you keep going. Okay, Uzumaki. What? Uzumaki. Hold the phone. His right. So we've been we've been talking about this for over four years, something like that. Oh, at least, if not longer. Saying it's coming it's all out about next the month. Spiral. Yeah, it will come out next month. Come out like six months. It's been delayed, 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 delayed. Okay, so Uzumaki is basically based on the amazing manga made by Jinji Ito. Um, an amazing uh, uh, manga horror, all right? So basically, um, it's been, uh, what's, what's the word? Faithfully animated. So they really, they've brought basically following scene by scene from the manga into animation, and it's finally landed on Adult Swim, all right? So Adult Swim, uh, you can find that on Channel 4. So is it a got, series? It's a series, yeah. I think there's eight episodes all in all. And they've already aired episode four. So we're that far at the moment. So there's a particularly horrible bit where a, a person turns into a snail. I'm just showing oh. Wendy the picture there, which Look is uh, rather chilling. Wendy, you'll love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. Oh, amazing. Oh, that's exciting news. Yeah, so it's basically, yeah, you kind of like this, this windy little village uh, in Japan. And this spiral just starts appearing everywhere in the town, in the wind, in the water, in the architecture, oh. in the the lighthouse. There's a you know, a, a, yeah, dear brother of ours. In the hair, house, but yeah, in your hair. In the hair. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Really good fun. So Uzumaki is out. And one last piece of news, bit of a sad one. We lost Maggie Smith, didn't we? Yes, a couple we of weeks have, ago. Indeed. Yeah. What are what so? Uh, what was your favourite Maggie Smith film? Me? Yeah, anyone? Mm. There was. See, you go on about how sad you are to have lost her. You haven't got a clue. <laughs> I like the Lady in the Van. Oh, Lady in the Van. That's true. Yeah, that's a good one. I love that. Yeah, Laurie. There's, there's one that she won an Oscar for. I yeah, go on. It's what like it's like Mrs. Mrs. Pembroke's Pink or Wickle Tickle. <laughs> But I haven't actually seen it, but my um, one of my close friends went on about it in great detail. I was like, wow, that sounds great. So it would be that one, but I haven't seen it. Oh, well, there we go. But she was pretty good, wasn't she? We can't, let's wasn't she that. just? So that was the Halloween news. Do, do, do. Halloween news. Which now, this brings us, Wendy. Oh, to... hold on. I've got some late news edition. Go on, go on, go on. Oh, getting the band back together. Elijah Wood addresses the Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum. Why he's looking forward to the new Lord of the Rings film, The Hunt for Gollum. I uh, can't think of anything bloody worse. I, <laughs> bloody Andy Serkis and Gollum and all that nonsense is just not my cup of tea. 
Longing it out. They're longing it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was long enough as it was. You know. Yeah. Longing, I mean, longing. What do you mean? Long Why are they hunting for Gollum? Well, I don't understand. Where did he get? I thought, oh, anyway. Oh, yeah. good. Oh, here we go. Honestly, there's so many different stories they could tell. I'm so excited to see what comes of it. Well, the last time they did that, they had about 45 minutes doing the washing up, as I remember, in, in The Fucking Hobbit. Do you remember that? Where they all... We... That had a sing song with it though, didn't it? Eh? Oh, well, that makes it all right. Of course it does. Singing dwarves was fun for all the family. Anyway, I'm not. I'm not an L O T R fan, really. I think even the people that it's beloved to are possibly sick of it. But far be it for me to say. Which brings us perfectly to in the beam. Scotty, beam me up. <laughs> Surprise. Ooh. Ooh. Now, what does In the Beam mean, James? So, In the Beam is where our lighthouse beam shines a light on one of a film that we've watched and we've particularly enjoyed and we can recommend to our listener. So, each of us gets to have a go, Wendy. So, have a little think about a film that you've seen recently that you'd like to recommend. Um, All right. Doesn't have to be recently, to be honest. Well, no. Well, it's seen as though it's our first one. No, but the more recent, the better. She's Possibly. been stuck down there ages. I think she gets privileges. <laughs> There's a DVD player. Brian, yeah, come on. Brian put one down there. <laughs> can I have that Martin Clune sticker album back, though? <laughs> Shut up. Right, can I start? Big one. Do it. All right. Well, I'm going to start with a film that I've, only, I've not quite seen all of, but that doesn't matter, I don't think. It's The Substance. Ooh. Heard about this? The Debbie Moore film? Oh, right, the lipstick thing, and then she turns into the young thing the from lipstick. Yellow Jackets. Yeah, 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 go on. I didn't know she, she was in Yellow Jackets, the young thing. Was she? Uh, is that not her? I don't know. Anyway. She, no, I don't think no, she's... lipstick. Much. Yeah, me, yeah, lipstick. Anyway, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a body horror kind of thing that looks at um, the male gaze and feminism, really. Quite good, but I haven't seen it all. Yeah, you haven't seen it all. Yeah, unfortunately, the um, cinema stopped working. So had to leave. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't walk right. out. Well, no, but we could. We were forced to end our viewing experience. Let's put it that way. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was a bit unfortunate, but for, I did see the fair, good half of it, and it was really good. <laughs> so it's basically about Demi Moore. She was a looker in a well, the character she plays, and there's this new drug. That she could in in inject into her eye or something. Is so something yeah, without don't without giving anything away. She yeah, she has to inject it somewhere, and um, it creates a new younger version of herself, which she has to give birth to, really. And right. then and then one of them's alive for awake for a week, and the other one's asleep, and have to feed the other one, and you know um, swap over after a week. And if they have to, if not, things go terribly wrong. And right. obviously, things go terribly wrong. Uh, but. It you know it it's got all those kind of it reminds me very much of um, you know uh, from beyond and all that kind of stuff and uh, oh uh, the thing John Carpenter's yes, the thing very, very much, much so, like yeah, that yeah. and all that kind of thing so uh, it's and it, but it's it's very stylized as well uh, the way it's done and shot and things like that and you know it, it just shows that Demi Moore have still got a lot to give. As a young person. Hear, hear. Ah, so there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Wendy, good. do you have any films you'd recommend? Would I do, yeah. Does it have to be horror? No. no. It could be anything you want, really. Well, last night I started watching The Wiz. The Wiz? The Wiz. Michael Jackson's yeah. The Wiz? Paul McCartney. Yeah, Diana Ross and Michael Jackson, yeah. Diana oh. Ross, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. How yeah, far did really, you get? Well, not completely all finished yet, but I say, wow, the the artisticness of it and the set design and the costumes and the singing, it's really, wow. It's not Do you know what? I've never that. seen it. Wow. It's like Jesus Christ Superstar, really. But Isn't it not I'm, like it, uh, The Wizard of Oz a bit? <laughs> well, it is a bit, but it's much better. It's I know, so but it is, it, is, it is based on The Wizard of Oz, is it? Yeah, 100% it is. Okay. Yeah. 
Feel free to just get that water pistol and just squirt him when you need to, Wendy. <laughs> it's, I can't be a little fantastic. It's, it's fantastic, isn't it, um, Laurie? Did Have you, you seen see it, it, Laurie? It, it is a good one. It is a good one. Um, like you say, like the sets and stuff like that, really, really cool. It's obviously very Motown, so it's kind of like, you know, mm. Wizard of Oz told to you via the power of Decca Records or whatever you want. Um, <laughs> and... Mm. Yeah, great singing, great performances. Obviously, you've got a young Michael Jackson before he started wanting to look like Adam Ant. Um, <laughs> That's an understatement. Apparently, you, it does suffer, though, kind of like it's interesting you've kind of haven't finished it, Wendy, because it is kind of one of those films where you get to a point and you get a little bit. It's not, a bit enough. It, it, you kind of had a bit enough of it, kind of thing, a bit exhausting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it no, I'll tell you lot. what that reminds me of Tommy. Fucking love the start of Tommy. <laughs> I think uh, this is a brilliant film. 30 minutes in, I'm thinking, what the fuck? We what talked about we talked about this bollocks. last episode. Well, I've said it. Yeah. Again. But back to the whiz, James. Yeah, it suffered. It it's suffered one quite, of it was because um what's her face? I forgot. Now Diana Ross, she had a lot of say. So like the director mm-hmm. had a plan for this scene to be that and this, that, and the other. But she was going through a lot of mental issues, apparently, and she had a lot of clout. So that's because she, she betrayed the Supremes. Well, that's it. Yeah, she so, did. Yeah. Do, she did. There's basically Diana Ross. But to be honest, that was just from yesterday. But I said the best film that uh, I've seen. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Yeah, no, no, no. Come on, come on. <gasps> come on, give me. Well, just, well, just give not, me give I'm me, not hosting, I'm but new, really, you're only supposed to have one. But go ahead. Just pretend I've never said the whiz. Say I said <laughs> Brian. Say I said Brian and Charles. That's it. Oh yeah, Brian uh, and Charles. We love that one. That's cute. Do love that one. I love that's yeah. the best. That is a brilliant, brilliant film. Hey, I. Yeah, that is a fantastic film. Um, Laurie, have you got? Oh, I'm not hosting. You do it. Yeah, I'll I'll do mine. I'm gonna say, so, way way early in the career of the Lighthouse, we were lucky enough to review in the mouth of madness. <laughs> John Carpenter. Yeah. And I believe out of a hundred, we may it's have scored it, it seven, something like that. I was completely wrong. If you like um HP Lovecraft, if you're into that kind of gig, it's it's just brilliant. In the mouth of madness is superb. So Sam we Neil, gave it we gave it 35 out of a hundred. Oh, brilliant. You've got the scores. That's wonderful. That's good to know. Sam Neil absolutely on top form the direction's great it builds creepily it's weird it's it it it, it, it does completely deliver on that hp lovecraft kind of vibe and feel and smell and stink and stick uh which is not easy because it's been tried to be it's been, been tried to have been done many many times and it very rarely lands well and in the mouth of madness is Fantastic, and I do apologise for our well, I have scoring to say, previously. I, I went to the cinema to see that, and I was a big fan, and I was very hopeful when we started watching it. But I think it was because Nico was around, wasn't he, and, and Wyndham, and I think, <laughs> yeah, they, I think they ruined it for us. Yeah, and maybe we went off it. was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's like, right. it was a bit embarrassing. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's all about, like, the power of words and stuff like that. But I think isn't it? some great bits. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm going to cheat. It is my Halloween spectacular. I right. will say, and it's not even a film. And I haven't even seen it. But I am going to shine the biggest, shiniest beam on this thing. But I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Centrus, Centrusu Iaki World Kawasugi. Centrusu Iaki World Kawasugi. What the All hell right. is that? Right. This is a Japanese, it's essentially it's a TV series, right? But every episode is about 90 minutes long. I think there's about eight, maybe 10 episodes. Quite hard to find. I think you might be able to find episode one or two Spell on it. YouTube. S E N R I T S U. Yeah. K A I K I. World, and then K A W A S U G I. All right, yeah, found it. That thing. Wow. As far as I can see, the smallest amount that I've seen. Like I said, I haven't properly watched it, but 
it's basically it's a research team of investigators who uh, investigate supernatural phenomenons. Um, and then each episode they go and find, you know, basically like the a Japanese X-Files meets Eric Andre meets the craziest mentalist shit you could ever even believe done on a very very tight budget they obviously just crazily inventive with the resources that they have there you go i just strongly recommend it i won't go on about it anymore. all right well it is you can find it on youtube so it's not that odd to find. brilliant so, I very much recommend um, look at that all right mm, have a look. which brings us to on the rocks Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. All right. Can I go? Mm. Are I've you right to play Neil Diamond for that bit? Always. It's what Dang. he's done. All right. So um, I've got a couple, but the one I wanted to kind of start with isn't really a film. It's a series. So is this and a film you'd recommend on the rocks or is this a film that... No, on the rocks is something that you don't recommend that you thought is not very ah. good. Ah, and right. I am going to choose the series The Penguin. Mm. Have you been watching it? I have. You like it? I really like it. Yeah. How far have you got? All the way. I'm yeah, right all up, the way. I'm right up to date. Yeah. And, and look, so it's... He's got his two boys and mushrooms. He's found his, oh. his, his lair. I couldn't be less interested. Um, oh I do like... God. I do think... Um, um, Sophia. The, Sophia is a brilliant, a remarkable character. But even that, that kind of long, I just think it loses a whole, it's not really Batman, is it? It's more like... Yeah, um, it is, it is. More it's like kind Gates of, of New, York, New York or Casino. Have you seen it, Wendy? No, she hasn't. Penguin? Yeah. No, I haven't. I'm sorry, I haven't seen Penguin, no. It's a series. Um, it's, it's supposed to be Batman, but it's not really. Because it's not supposed no. to be Batman. It's called Penguin. And what's it from? It's from the world of DC. Ah. <laughs> you know, it's from Batman. No, it's not Batman's from name. Batman. Right? Penguin from Batman. Buster Merrifield, is that his name? Oswald Copperpot, is that? No, it? the guy who did it in the 60s. Bob and Kane? He didn't do bloody Penguin in the 60s, did he? Oh, right, who portrayed it? Yeah, Rocky's... Buster, uh, it was Buster, I'm sure it's Buster Merrifield. Let's have a yeah, look. of course it is Buster. Uh, let's have a bit of him. A Batman's not only going to pick my crime, he is going to provide me with a blueprint as to how I should pull it off. Penguin, are you sure you haven't gone stir crazy? <laughs> how dare you mock me on the eve of my greatest triumph? You know, all like exploding um, um, umbrellas and, you know, um, yeah. wide up. But can't, can't penguins. you see that? Can't you see that in, you know, Colin Farrell's portrayal and his makeup? You can see the penguin. You yeah, can... if you're really lucky, every now and oh. then, you see a bit of a beak. I want the fucking exploded penguins. Okay, mm. well, that's on your rocks. Okay, yeah. you, you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, so there's a subtle beak. A subtle yeah, penguin. yeah. It's yeah. a subtle beak. It's too much of a subtle beak for me. All right. I like a subtle beak. Have you got anything, Wendy, you reckon sucks the fat one? Uh, yeah, and back to black. Oh no, it's yeah. Winehouse Yes, yes. Very bad. Yeah. Very bad. Are yes. you a fan of baby? Got... Yeah. Yeah. I am. I have to say I am, yeah. And it's no, I didn't like it. It was like a it was like an EastEnders episode. Oh god. It really yeah. was. And not a good one. Not like one on one dot con dot cotton and Ethel sat in bed. Not a good one. A bad EastEnders episode, right? Well, it just was a bit sort of, oh, gosh, you know, not gritty or character. I don't know. The actors were good. They did do a good job. The direction and the writing was just a bit. Oh, there, was a bit there was a bit where they went to the zoo and basically they had this montage of them going to the zoo and there was a bit where they were sitting in like a circular window where the fish were looking at each other and then he was oh. pretending to be a monkey and then oh, it was yeah. like and it's like oh for fuck's sake yes, where's the crack bad. where's yeah. all the crack <laughs> yeah. you know and uh yeah it was just really cliche wasn't it and melodramatic mm. yeah i'm not surprised i saw the trailer for that and i thought this looks shit. Mm. So there yeah. we are. I'll tell oh, you well. what, though. 
If you want to go and see a film about Amy Winehouse, go and watch Amy, the documentary that was uh, came out just after her death, which is yeah. that's mm-hmm. that's for a, a brilliant, and it really captures the whole kind of style of it. Really, I think this was a money making exercise, and I think it was funded very much by the father, really, because he had a very sympathetic. Oh, mm. Amy, come on, get off the yeah. smack. But he didn't have an Amy, did he? No, did he? Well, allegedly, let's not get sued. <laughs> That's the thing. I think it's very controversial because some people are saying, you know, in that Amy documentary, the father obviously had a really bad name in it. Yeah. And so, yeah, and actually that's not how it was. You know, so it's it's got... A, but even if it was to be like that, it just could have been a bit more real. I don't know. Just, yeah. Even I, if it wanted to put the dad in it. I don't know, it's just, yeah. just badly, badly directed, I think. I think that's a good call, Wendy. Well done. High five. Merci. Ho-ho. Right, I'm going to bring you Salem's Lot 2024, right? However, right, however, uh-huh. I am saying on the rocks, but I don't really mean it. It's just giving me an excuse to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> by the makers of The Conjuring. Right, obviously it's oh, going to be Oh, really? And then it's like, by someone who had something to do with It Part 2. I think he was one of the writers. These are the <laughs> official, like, posters, right? So just can we just bring Wendy up to speed? So Salem's Lot is a novel um, written in about 1978, probably, by uh, the wonderful and talented Stephen King. And it's um, a wonderful book. And it had a... Uh, there was a TV adaptation, TV se- uh, media, uh, oh. series... In the in the late seventies, early eighties, which which is like a staple of like horror, yeah, going, it's brilliant, yeah. Um, and they've they've done a remake since, which wasn't very good at all, and now they've done this one, and um, apparently it's just okay. Yeah, so that's that's what you hear in the reviews. They say, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. So what I would it's say fine. about yeah, it's fine. What I would say about it, yeah. It it's fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that actually. I would say what's the point of it? Um and what's different about it. So there it it tells the story in like 140 minutes, right? Yeah. So obviously we were gifted, the world has been gifted with the, the the TV series where you've got three hours, they can tell the story that's in the book, you can get involved with all the characters. You know that's only half an hour longer though. Well, yeah. Well, no, it's not. It is. It's an hour and twenty minutes longer. Come on, man. Hold on. How much was? How much did you say this film was? How long was this? An film? hour and forty, baby. An hour and forty. Oh right, I said my my bad. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. So it it tells the story super super quickly. Um. Like Straker, such a great character. He's played by the um. Oh damn it, Danish guy. Anyway, blah blah blah. You don't really get that character involvement at all in any way, but it does do things differently. Um, like there's this whole scene, particularly at the end, where they're at this drive-in, and it's it's full of action, for want of a better word. You've got this full-on vampire kind of crash, bang, wallop, chase, smash, stake, explosion mm. stuff. And this is Salem's Lot, and I was thinking like, oh, okay, so here's the point of this film. Now, if I want to show, I have shown this film to a younger generation, like 11 years old, 12 years old, whatever. I kind of want to show it to my eight-year-old, but it won't fuck her up. But that's what I want. I want to fuck her up. But anyway, besides the point, but this has, I suppose, that kind of younger audience appeal so they can watch a vampire movie. It is still kind of following the traditional vampire laws. You know, it is a monster that's, you know, it's not, you know, like the, the, the other weird films where they explore. A vampire has its own kind of feelings and moral codes and stuff yep. like that. Are you talking Twilight? Are you talking Twilight? I am, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, that's the way at the other end of the spectrum. So it is quite a solid down-the-line vampire film, which is great. Uh, you've got the Marston House in there, fantastic. You've got Barlow in there, wonderful. And then, like I say, this kind of action scene bit at the end. So it's like, okay, there is a point to it. You know, it's kind of opening it up maybe for a younger audience, blah, blah, blah. But does it really do anything? No, it doesn't. So anyway, there we are. I wonder a little bit. 
It's like Stephen King is probably going to be regarded in a few hundred years' time as maybe somebody like, a bit like Charles Dickens for like writing of his time, you know. Yeah. So talking about so, mm. um, you know, the the books he wrote in the seventies evoked the seventies and a very pop culture reference, all that kind of stuff, and so for the eighties and blah blah blah. Now, what's happening now is obviously these books are not being made in the seventies. It wasn't set in the seventies, was it? It was. This was set in the eighties, actually. I believe that was it. Oh well, then ignore me. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I was going to say maybe that loses something, but it's set in the eighties, and what do I know? Yeah, I think it's because the the intrusion of mobile phones is just it disrupts narratives so mm. massively. Yeah. So, well, why didn't he just call him, or why didn't they just Google that answer? Absolutely. Those kind of yeah. things. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah Salem's Lot. So I'll put it near the rocks. It's not quite on the rocks because it does have a purpose. However, no whilst talking about the rocks, hark, what do I hear? Is that the trailer trawler? It's... Well, I haven't, I haven't seen any trailers recently because I've been to the cinema. Oh, oh yes, yes. Have oh, you seen any exciting look. trailers, Wendy? Oh, well, actually... This is on the rocks. I saw a trailer for the Joker and went to see it. Yeah. Did I say that? What was that? Yeah, what did just... you see? The Joker, the new one. Oh, yeah. You went to see it. Well, let's talk about that because you went to see it. Have you... Has anyone else been to see it? No. Okay. Mm. And what's it called? Joker Cirque du Soleil. That's it. So, oh. come on. What did, what did you... Had you seen the first one? Yeah. I saw so... the first one. What did you what did, what what did you have what hopes did you have going in and then what did you think of it? I suppose I, I thought it would be a bit more the, from the trailer. It seems it seems as if they it would be a it would be like a, a fully like a cra- a crazy time that they would do together. You know, have these really mad moments together. But it wasn't really like that for me. I didn't feel this madness, this kind of wired feeling that you feel that he is in the first one mm-hmm. it just and then with the singing as, uh, singing aspect it just feel a bit weird and <laughs> off it just all of a sudden what and the this the the scenes of them singing was too long and it just mm. kind of it would have been interesting if he if they would have made it a bit more eerie singing but it just went on as if it was kind of disney type mm. thing and so it just lost that eerie did it have like any any of the other villains in the chorus in any of the songs like the penguin mm. two-faced <laughs> no yeah. it was duet. just late no it was weird i just didn't really and yeah lady gaga bless her she's had this filler in her lips so she's just 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 there in your face yeah all the time. You so she's been filler. eating a, a, a sandwich full of wasps <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of very distracting. That's very it is, distracting. isn't it? Yeah, I think what you're saying there is pretty much across the board how people felt about it, and it has massively bombed. It has massively bombed. Like the embarrassment of like I don't know the past sort of fifteen years or whatever. They spent a lot of money on it, um, and <laughs> apparently. Uh, Joaquin Felix was very involved with the director on this and he would basically be having dreams one yeah. night and then yeah. he'll come the next day saying, oh, I think it'd be a really great idea if we could, you know, maybe have this sequence. That I... And it was it was Joaquin Phoenix's dreams that was dictating what's happening in this film. And he's a good actor, but boy, that motherfucker ain't no <laughs> writer. And particularly can't dream about writing because, yeah, it's completely bombed. Isn't it? I think what happened as well, wasn't it, that because Joker was kind of under the radar quite a bit and it was a massive success. Oh, it's good. Gave, it's a good no, deal. Yeah, of course. But they gave them free reign, really, on this one completely to do what they yeah. want. Hence the yeah. dream sequence. Yeah. Another person who's recently had free reign to make anything he wants is, um, what's his name? Uh, Francis Ford Coppola. He's the yeah. Megalopolis. Has anyone... Again, again. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, I haven't seen it. Some people say it's absolutely brilliant. Some people say it's absolutely terrible. Pretentious bollocks, yeah. And I think the thing is, when you get given as much to do whatever you want, you naturally, a human instinct must be wrap it around your throat and hang yourself. 
because yeah. apparently yeah. that's what he's done with his massive film as well. So yeah, um, back to the trailer. Tour. I've seen something looks quite interesting. Uh, it's going to be coming out beginning of next year. The Legend of Ochi by the Ooh. studio A to A. It's it, we got Willem Dafoe in there, Emily oh, Watson, always good. Phil mm. Finn Wolfhard and a new face called Helena Zengi. Um, it looks, I don't know, it just it looks like it's harking back to those kind of, you know, those films back in the eighties that actually had heart in them. What's you it know, called? I, the Legend called of Ochi. The Legend Ochi. of. I'll play Ochi. a clip now. I think. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting sort of E.T. vibes. I'm getting kind of eco warrior kind of vibes. I'm getting young Yoda vibes. Yeah, it's definitely a Yoda look to it. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks quite good. So there we are, Legend of Ochi. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And obviously we could keep talking about um, Nosferatu, which is going to be with us very soon. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. That second trailer, because when I saw the first one, I looked at the cast and went, I reckon I, I love Robert Eggers. I love him. The witch I absolutely adore. Uh, then we get the lighthouse. Oh, oh my yeah, 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 yeah. God, yeah. that's it. Um, and then you get the Norseman. Three really brilliant, interesting, engaging, mad, brilliant, strong films. And then you get the Nosferatu. It's like okay, one is being released. Slap bang on Christmas Day in the US. We're going to get it on the 3rd of January, but that's fantastic. Two, it's a classic horror. Classic horror. I can't remember the last time we've had a... Well, yeah, maybe you could argue, actually, Salem's Lot is a classic. But, um, yeah, this is exciting. Um, but, yeah, when I saw the first trailer, I thought, oh, I think he might have lost it. I think he might fuck this one up. He's playing for money. He's, you know, you've got Johnny Depp's daughter in there, whatever. Is he playing for, like... You know, a, a blockbuster or something like that. Is he, you know, selling out? Then, then I watch the second trailer, this new one. I'm like, ah, shit. I've, I'm, I've got a chubby. Yeah. Quick question for you, Wendy. Johnny Depp. What was his first role? Prawn. Say again. I can't hear you. You're on mute. You're on mute. Ham salad. She knows the answer to this. I know it. Egg mayonnaise. Mm, 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 mm. We, I know it. I know it. I know it. Sausage. One, two, Freddy's coming. For That's you. not his first role. Yeah, it is. No. What is it? He's like, he's probably in Huckleberry Finn or something, wasn't he? He wasn't. Was that was he not his in first movie going? role. It was his first Some movie point, role. Like, dusting off the. That but Elm Street is the answer. Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes. please. So, so you watched this recently. You've never seen it before, have you, Reddy? I remember that. Yeah, what did you think of it? What did you think of the film? No, no. Yeah, 100%. That's a so wicked. We, you know I love that. That was actually scary because a lot of the ones that you showed me in that same century, not as funny, not as scary. Oh, I could, I'm I could, sorry about that. <laughs> I, well, but yeah, that's good because you know it and everything was was in the the new one is scary because of the special effects that they've got, but the old one is so scary. Yeah, we like the old one, but I'm really pleased about that Elm Street because I thought it would. I thought it it's aged. I didn't know how it would have aged really, but um, I obviously love that film. It and aged well. It, it aged, aged well on me. Well. I think those those early sequences, you know, going around the school, the body bag being dragged, the Tina. woman, Tina. the young girl being dragged over the ceiling and slashed to shit, it's timeless, isn't shit, it, really? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you oh, get to oh. the tongue coming out of the phone and it's like, yeah. Yeah, but if you're not expecting it, it's supposed yeah, to be okay, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know, I don't know, but anyway. I'm going to say one more quick one. So, obviously, uh, long legs. A little bit of a surprise hit. Um, we, we, well, we've year. kind of talked about this a bit. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Bear with me, caller. Oh. Um, so, Osgood Perkins, the guy who made Long Legs, mm. his next film uh, coming out in February, The Monkey. Now, when I talk about a symbol playing monkey, we all know <gasps> who that monkey is, right? 
Born from an egg on a mountain top. That guy. Oh. No, no, he doesn't no. play cymbals. He blows clouds. <laughs> oh fuck! Is it the is it the one on you the know, top the... Of, of the music box? From well, that, yeah, from, from, you know, um, like... from a Phantom of the Opera. Just like the scary fucking monkey thing that goes, eh, 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 and you got mm -hmm. his eyes. Oh shit! Anyway, it's called the monkey. All right, and oh. that's coming out. It looks pretty darn okay. Oh, well, we'll look out for that. Okay. The well, that's a lot of recommendations there, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Such content, which brings us to our main feature: <laughs> Halloween. Hello, Halloween. So what do we got? All Hallows Eve. It's that time again. Um, the day where the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. A day to celebrate ours and others' mortality. A day for the freak. Uh, a night <laughs> with an invitation to go in your neighborhood, terrorize your neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, your community, uh, and you can dress up on the hunt for some sweet swag. And, of course, it's a night to stay up and watch horror movies, which is Absolutely. always great. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, quick question. What's your favourite films to watch at the Halloween Tide? Wendy, you got any favourites to watch on at Halloween? I'm just coming back. I'm just coming into Halloween. I was a little bit of a Scrooge with Halloween. Oh, right. But, nice. Yeah, but um, especially come, James has definitely opened up the whole hor horror, thriller, scary for me. Ventricle. Yeah. Yeah. He's torn so it open. I, he 100% has. Isn't yeah. It, James? Well, you know what we're going to be watching this year, Wendy? What? Halloween 3. Oh, it's honestly one of the best, dude. Have you seen Halloween? No, I'm a very big, I'm a big, I've not seen anything. So this is, I'm oh, a new beautiful. person. I'm right. A newbie. She's a new person. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, so I re probably recommend maybe watch Halloween first and then watch Halloween 3 because you'll be like, what the fuck? Um, and mm -hmm. that adds something extra to it. Halloween 3 is a fantastic I would say personally, well, would you be interested in the most popular films that people watch at Halloween? The top three? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Why not? Or some of the top three. Can I, can I try and guess them? Yeah, go on. All right. So I'm going to say The Exorcist. No. Oh. I'm going to well, say... Yeah, no, that would probably be in top ten somewhere. Yeah, sorry. The Shining. Probably somewhere in top ten. Well, hold do, on. What is do this better. top three? I want, you, I want you to basically say the three that I've got on my paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have to give us some clues then. We've just talked about it literally a second ago without the uh, sub pressure. No, Elm Street. No. Halloween it's Hall three. It's Halloween. Halloween is one of the big, most popular films to watch at Christmas. Another one that will have, <laughs> you've got a, three witches at in Christmas. it. Christmas. No. Oh, it's, it's, don't yeah. worry. Uh -huh. just, fall, just go along with it. Just, just not. All right. Uh -huh. so the witches of Eastwood. No. Um, kind of a comedy, kind of cutesy. Not Hocus Pocus. Yes, Hocus Pocus. Oh, Lord. And then last of all, uh, I gave it away with my Christmas slip-up. And is it really a Halloween movie? I don't know. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Christmas. Um, I mean, would you believe it? Would you believe it? So anyway, forget that. Forget that. But Those three choices frames, were awful. I know. That's kind of give you a little bit of a framing in the world that we live in. But we love the world that we live in because we have Suspiria, right? We have Halloween 3 and we have The Fog. That's my three recommendations. Just little cosy ones to snuggle up to at Halloween Tide. Mm, the okay. Fog. Oh, The Fog is brilliant. The Fog's good, yeah. It's like a proper little... Old school, like set, little fair set on a little fair. island about yeah. a mysterious fog. Yeah, and they come and fuck you right up. It's yeah, great. That is great. That is great. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, all those bangers. What else about the Halloween? Oh, music, because you normally do different things. Music. <laughs> all I'm going to say is The Cure, Songs from a Lost <clears throat> World. The Cure, first time in, I can't remember how long, 30 years, something stupid like that. They've got a new album. 
uh, their first single came out a few weeks ago called Alone. Oh my God, there was no reason for it to have been that good. It's really good. And their second single's out now, a fragile thing. Fantastic. They released their album on Halloween at the stroke of midnight. Oh. Well, I've got a little treat for you both. Go on. I've got a little quiz here. And Go. this is a quiz which will find out what Halloween film you are or your best suit to. So, Wendy, what's your favourite season? Summer, winter, autumn or spring? Autumn. Mm, good choice. What is your favourite colour? Just choose any colour. Actually, can I change the autumn to spring? No. <laughs> it's <Okay>. too late. <laughs> um, favourite colour? Favourite colour? Green. Blue. Okay. There's only seven questions. What's your favourite drink? Soda, juice, water, coffee, tea or smoothies? Um, coffee. Okay. How long Your favourite is... animal? Dog, cat, frog, rabbit, panda or snake? Cat. Really? Favourite food? Mm. Pizza, nachos, sushi, pasta, soup or tacos? Um, soup. <laughs> yeah, it's just a couple more left. Okay, favourite fruit? Strawberry, apple, kiwi, banana, mango, pineapple or I don't like fruit? Mango. Mango. Last one. Do you celebrate Halloween? No, yes, sometimes I used to. No, but I want to. What's Halloween? Um, no, but I want to. Oh, okay. So, your result. So, your film should be The Nightmare Before Christmas. There you oh, go. Okay. We'll, we'll get Wally. you into spirit. You Wally. It, it was the thing, the spring thing. The spring would have changed it for you <laughs> it totally yeah. would have been what would it have been mm. Mm. we'll never know we'll never know right, right. which on. brings us on to our first film oh yeah yeah let's do let's scare jessica to death came out 1971 uh director john d hancock <laughs> uh writers john d hancock <laughs> Lee Kalkman, um, Sheridan Le Flanu, stars Zora Lampert, Barton Heyman, Kevin O'Connor, Gretchen Corbett, and music by Orville Stober. Oh. There you go. Look at that. Um, do we do IMDb now? Should we do that? Or do you do clip? Yes, do that's just do that bit first. Yeah. So, IMDb uh, 6.4, whatever that means. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 36. Idiots. Budget, uh, 250,000. Opening week, it brought in $47,651. It was initially conceived by writer Lee Klein Klein um, as a satirical horror about a group of hippies that were preyed on by a monster in a lake. Um, but then it was brought over, I don't know, by some director and he wanted to change things around and he opened, he decided to go for a more straightforward horror film, uh, set in a remote farmhouse, blah, blah, blah. Um, it received mixed reviews when it came out, but a lot of critics remarking, um, about the atmosphere and the performances, um, being a little bit inconsistent. Um, but it quickly developed that cult following. It's kind of one of those films. Um, bear with me. And Roger Greenspurg called it the thinking man's vampire movie. Mm. Should we play a clip? Yes. I'm calling on all the spirits of everyone who's ever died in this house. Jessica, I'm calling on all the spirits of everyone who's ever died in this house. Jessica. Paramount Pictures presents Let's Scare Jessica to Death.
Why have you been following me? What's the matter with her? She knows who killed that man. What man? I don't know. He was lying right here. But I swear it's true. No! I think that the same creature or, or whatever it is that killed the antique dealer killed them all. So there we go. Let's scare Jessica to death. Can I just say that... Synopsis. The ti- oh, right. Um, yeah, but just before I do the synopsis, the title of the film is a little bit of a spoiler. No, nah, we're going to get to that. That All is right. so massive. All right. So the synopsis such is... such a massive thing. Chill, chill, chill. The synopsis is, deep in the heart of hippie-loving America, um, Jessica and her two boyfriends arrive in a farmhouse to start their new life, <laughs> and canning apples or whatever it is. But little husband, do they know... Husband and friend. Let's be yeah, honest. well, yeah, whatever. Uh, but little do they know that when they get there, there's going to be a load of shit going down, what with ghosts or vampires or freaky people from the town. Freaky sneaky. And is she crazy? We don't know. She could be. She could not be. We've <laughs> All we've oh. got is her inner monologue to talk us through it. <laughs> Well, that's exactly mm-hmm. it. So, have you ever seen this, uh, Wendy? Have you ever seen this one before? Oh, no. Definitely not. No. Wow. James? Mm. Yeah, I saw it. I think I must have saw it, seen it about four or five years ago for the first time. Well, I've only seen it once before. And I liked it very much just for the for what we're going to get into. It's just, it, it's, it's kind of a bit of a breath of fresh air in a kind of uh, uh, traditional kind of way, really. But... Uh, an old, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like an old ghost story, but with kind of that modern seventies twang. Uh, but yeah, there's lots to love about this film. Um, namely, uh, well, not namely Jessica, to be honest, because I found her quite annoying. <laughs> but oh no, I think she's brilliant. Yeah, I think she's so I, good. I do as well, actually. I, I I really really like this film. Yeah, I think it. It, it tells a really chilling story. I think the performance is brilliant, uh, but we'll get on to all of that, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I had never seen this and before, and I can see why it's, it's, it's been given that cult status. I mean, what is it? You know, is it is it a film about the dying era of the hippies and now we're going into the 70s? Is it a film about mental psychosis and... How important it is to you know have your loved ones around you? Is it about jealousy? Is it about what that? It's about all of them. You know, is it's it a quite funny as well? Because... Film about vampires? Uh, you just don't know that it's just. I don't know if it's deliberate uh, or or a massive fluke, but I I I, I suspect strongly that it's deliberate. But it's so open. It's yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. Tell, tell me Have if I'm wrong. anything like this? Tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they ever explicitly say that Jessica was in an asylum or anything like that or a psychiatric hospital. They just refer to mm. the kind of it sometimes as... The doctors. The, the doctors. doctors. Yeah. 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 You'll go back to, to the, you know, she was staying away or something. I don't know. It felt like that. Is what was happening, but you were saying, yeah. uh, you said, um, James, oh, carry on, carry on, we'll come back to that. No, 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 go on, go on, go, go, go. No, the the redhead, she was seemed that she could be in, she seemed quite modern, didn't she? She didn't look like it, it, she could have been in this day, really. Her look, yeah, was quite. See, they say she was quite a, a vampiric ghost from taken from time, didn't seem like she could be from anywhere. <laughs> Well, you know, she seemed Anytime. quite contemporary, really, to be honest. Yeah, that's right. Quite yeah, and again, like accident or deliberate. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, um, I suppose, yeah. When you we we kind of first open up, we're already. This is a, a brilliant trick that they did as well. We basically hear inside Jessica's mind, right? So we quickly find out that she's. She's been through some mental trauma. She's not particularly that well. So that's why they go into the country, just to get the fuck away from the city and chill out. And then quite quickly, you're already listening to her mind because she thinks she sees stuff. She she thinks she's seeing maybe like a ghost. Don't tell them, don't tell them you hear her saying in her head. Mm. And then they get back to the house and they meet this girl 
And then again, you start going into her mind and it's like, oh, he likes her. You know, her husband likes this girl kind of thing. You're listening yeah. to her paranoia. So why did she... Grows... This is what I'm interested about. Why did she invite her to stay? Why was she so... Um, you know... Life life is like that. You know, you can... You know, uh, is it? You ever had times where, like, you're jealous in a moment? You know, you've had a couple of drinks, you feel all jealous. But then the next day, it's like... Oh, you know, you're more broad and it's mm. always fine. You feel no, slightly different. I, take it, I, I build on that jealousy and <laughs> hatred. <laughs> and not work out how those to destroy topics, but you know, she's you know, she's a hippie man, um, and she's obviously aware of her psychosis. She's aware of that voice in her mind. So she now she's not hearing it. She might be like, right, yeah, fuck you, shithead voice in my head. Um, I think it's just it's so cleverly done, and. You don't know. You genuinely don't know when you get to the end of this film what the fuck is her brain lying to her? Is mm. what she's seeing actually really what's happening? Uh, is is actually what's happening? Um, yeah, because there's a bit I've written a bit down here. Um, so we should also reflect as well that you know in 1972 films about mental health were pretty rare. You know, so to kind of cover that kind of aspect, I think, is um, quite an interesting thing to look at. Yeah. And the way they dealt with it, I thought was brilliant. But, you know, when they do the seance, is it just Jessica yeah. or can everybody hear those spooky voices? Yeah, and the, uh, the way Jessica talks about it um, is actually like she's thinking that everyone can hear it. She's like, she just walks up and goes, oh, it's so sad. Like, you could hear that baby mm. Mm. laughing or whatever. Such a great scene. And again... Like, it makes me think of, there's a very famous scene where she says she finds a mole. She picks up this mole and she goes, oh, it hasn't got any eyes. And the camera is basically right next to this thing that she's holding her hand. It's a mouse. It's a mouse. And she even yeah. says, it hasn't got any eyes. And the camera can see its eyes. It's, <laughs> it's a mouse. Um, yeah. And it's like, is that deliberate? And then she puts it in the cocky cookie jar and, you know, becomes part of the family. And then someone comes and kills it with a knife. What's going on there? Is that a ridiculous, bad continuity thing that the director, J.D. Hancock, couldn't be asked to take out? Or is that just another little weird step that adds to all of it? I mean, let's go back to when you said it's called Let's Scare Jessica to Death. What the hell is that? I was watching this film. I I was literally probably like five minutes from the end. I was like, wait a minute. This isn't what I was expecting here. This is not them trying to scare Jessica to death. This is not a setup. Because I thought it was all just a big setup. You know, yeah. the, the girl's in the lake. They've obviously given her an air tank there so she can come out. No, 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 no. It's not. The, the, the end film, it, it finishes. It's like, Oh, fuck. What the fuck? And it's genius. It's absolute genius. It's always sidestepping. It's kind of like you, you, you kind of watch Inland Empire with, um, you know, David Lynch's in, Inland Empire, where it's, it's very hard to kind of get that narrative. But I might argue that this borderline has more, I don't know, more... I don't know, sidesteps or missteps or whatever it may be I'm trying to articulate mm. here, than even that, even a David Lynch film. It's fantastic. So do it's you think really... it was a miss uh, in that same veil? Because, you know, when you see the picture of what's the name in the uh, uh, in the old-fashioned picture in the attic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, the, the it's, it's absolutely her. It's not like it's yeah, smudged yeah, yeah, yeah. at all. I mean, it's, it's like a picture of her. But, yeah, yeah it yeah. takes oh, everyone a while to kind of see it really and yeah, I'm that, yeah it does take a couple of days but i suppose like day two maybe you could say jessica says that looks exactly like you because eh, not really it's like no no it really does look just like you it's in the eyes kind of thing she says but it's his husband that fancies her anyway he looks at it and he's like now nah, let's take it away but he fancy he thinks he's she's a bit of something so yeah, yeah. I really disliked him. I thought he was a twat, especially when didn't it, like when he went downstairs and she was upstairs and stuff. I thought that was really out of order. Yeah, yeah that was really... nasty. See, I'm not very good at uh, watching films when someone vulnerable is being, you know, just yeah, 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 just or not listened to, or they're just 
it re- I really, really feel it badly. And this this film did that for me. And I thought I thought she was an absolutely fantastic actress. She was brilliant. I didn't yeah. do a bit of research on her. Yeah, she so did anything else. She was in. Oh, please tell me I wrote it down. Um, she was in a couple of episodes of Kojak. She was really mm-hmm. good in. Oh no, I know there's some good stuff. Oh, she was in Opening Night, um, uh, Jean Cassavetti's film, an absolutely brilliant film. If anyone's listening to this and has never seen it, do yourself a favor, go and watch Opening Night by Jean Cassavetti. Well, that's me and Wendy for a start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good one. Uh, not a straightforward film though, but yeah. A um, couple of things at Kojak. There's something else, but I can't. Find where I can I just say as well, it was lovely to see a chicken farm in the film. They were often underrepresented in television media, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely to see that. And uh, yeah, what was that? What the was chicken, represented? The chicken farm, a chicken farm. He loves chicken a chicken farm. farm, chicken farm. I thought it was a bit yeah. rude. He loves it so much. I, but it makes more sense once. now, but I thought it was a bit rude to tell him to go and collect her own eggs, soon as though that was his only job to do at the farm. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And the other guy just putting pesticide everywhere. Yeah. Just like yeah. every day. Yeah, I told every you, maybe day. just told it for home. <laughs> yeah. But again, another thing, another little kind of little throwaway line that you wouldn't think of. But at the time, you might think, that's a bit odd. Because she goes to reach for an apple. And he's like, don't touch that, it's poisonous. And it's like, mm, do you know what I mean? It's like, is that deliberate? You can't take the apple, it's, po- it's an apple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, be it, fair enough, dude has covered it in pesticide, but you just wash it off, right? Anyway, well, surely, know. otherwise, that whole business is fallible. Yeah. What they the fuck they with all those apples? Yeah. I thought, then, the, I thought the four leads worked brilliantly together as well. I thought they all worked really well. Yeah, yeah. Agreed, agreed. Um, and just to say as well, that whole kind of premise of the vampire. So what we kind of got here, apparently could be a vampire film. So there is a bit, you get a little bit of neck biting, mm-hmm. a little bit of that, and then you get the scars uh, on all the villagers' necks and stuff like that. So, you know, is but this a vampire film? all of those she was, she was taking from the grave, graveyards, all those... Um, oh, the, bro- those the rubbings. Yeah, yeah, the rub- she went to get the rubbings. Yeah, that was quite interesting. Rubbings. Those rubbings. Yeah, I think... I th- I, I, it's got a lot of folk horror elements to it, hasn't it, really? All those kind of thing, traditional things that kind of pull it in, but it don't, don't feel like they just throw loads at it. It just gently builds, and it's very tense. I think it's very, mm. very, very tense. I liked it. Um, what do we think of the music? Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely superb music. So you've got um, Orville Stober did that so you've got beautiful piano bit of guitar but then these wonderful synthesizers so it's obviously Mm -hmm. the day where moogs and synthesizers are being really developed so the soundtrack yeah particularly great brilliant well that's all i've got really i I didn't really have a standout moment but i thought i enjoyed the whole thing really it was just like a gentle floating down a, a spooky river for me yeah, agreed. Um, does it stand up today? Personally, I think 100%. I think yeah, it's a really, too. if you haven't seen it, and likelihood you probably haven't seen it, I kind of didn't really have ever heard of it. So, James, yet again, you've done it. You've bringing me an absolute banger. It's oh, brilliant. You're welcome. All right, so should we do the scores? Shall I do Let's the do scores it. for you, Laurie, to keep things easy? Performances? Yeah. Right, performances, i give it an eight. I'm going to go nine. And this is out of ten, Wendy. What do you... Yeah, yeah, I give it an eight. Yes, eight. Effect, slurry. Just for that mole that had no eyes, but it had eyes and ears, and it was a mouse, it's an eight. Wow. Uh, Wendy? Uh, I gave it actually five. Well, I gave it a two, because I don't think there was any, really. Plot, I gave it a seven. Wendy? Five. I'm going to go... Yes, six, six, sorry. Because it was so swirly and just you can't, you don't know. Eight. All right. Uh, rewatch factor, Laurie. Seven. Seven. Wendy. Three. Direction, Wendy. Six. Seven for me. Because you don't know, you can't tell if it's a mistake or if it's deliberate. It's sublime. Ten. 
Wow. Oh, you like to get this one. Cinematography and design, I gave it an eight. Uh, seven. Yes, me too. Seven. Sound and music, Wendy. Five. Eight for me. Eight for me. Originality, Laurie. I'm going to go eight. Eight. I'm going to go seven. Enjoyability gets an eight from me. Seven from me. Six from me. And life changing past or present, Wendy? Uh, I'm going to say five. Six from me. I'm going to say seven. Really? Thanks again, James. All right. So if you could give me all the scores, that means I'd give it a score of 69 out of 100. Wendy? Oh, a six out of 100. I gave it 55 out of 100. Brilliant. And 81. 81. 81. I do have one more question. On. on that on those categories, is this a Halloween banger? Out of six, mm. is this a Halloween movie? Well, I would say yeah, really. But it depends what you want. Is it darkness and th thrills, or, or is it something spooky, or a thinking man's vampire movie? It's not even. It is that, but it's not that. Yeah, I'm going to say out of six, is it a Halloween movie? Well, uh, maybe a 3.5. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that's, that has no correlation to the story. No, yeah, ignore me, ignore me. All right, so I can tell you on the our big leaderboard, because we haven't really done a 2024 one this time, uh, it gets, it is placed in 84th place, which is just below District 9. Um, and it uh, just above the duelists, uh, but it joins Blood Feast. Do you remember Blood Feast? Yeah, I do. I like Blood Feast. So I don't we need to get, pretty... get, get some more Herschel in. Bad at all. But yeah, so that's 85th out of 124. So that's not bad. That's not, not bad. bad. I think it deserves a bit better. It is so unique. It is uh, unique. Mm. If well, you we... like films, if you like thinking and that stuff, I'd recommend it for sure. Brilliant. <laughs> Chilled by the autumn winds, feeling Jack Frost just round the corner. Well, we think it's high time you started looking for your summer vacation retreat. Silver Shamrock Holidays give you Jason Voorhees Lakeside Holiday Estates. It's all your family would need to have a life-changing vacation. Each property meticulously executed, offering killer views of Cape Crystal Lake, Demure, Porous, Broccoli. Jason Voorhees Lakeside Holiday Estates. Prices slashed to shit. It's guaranteed you'll make a killing. Apply by Thursday 12 to get your complimentary wet wipes. So life goes by knives, machetes, axes, or arrows. Any hint when approaching orgasm instantly voids your guarantee. Right. So this brings us to this is a Halloween special, obviously, and Halloween special deserves a Halloween quiz. Oh so, it's got a jingle. Oh lovely. Quiz seance. Quiz seance. Is anybody out there? It's a quiz seance. <laughs> quiz seance. Quiz seance. <laughs> Put your hands together. It's a quiz seance. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Okay. So, disclaimer, I've got to start with this, because uh, we did this last year, didn't we? And Jesus, the fallout was crazy. Disclaimer, anyone with a nervous or sensitive constitution should avert their gaze now. Two, Okay, that's three. all our listeners go. Brilliant. Okay. So, basically, Wendy, um, by channeling my powers to connect with the ethereal plane, I can open my vessel, right, <laughs> wide, gaping to the past, to the deceased, oh. to the unliving. To oh, enter you're going to love this, Wendy. They can enter me, all right, and you've got to guess what spirit 
They're, they tend to be famous people. I don't know why. Well, there is actually that one guy um, that turns up. If he starts going on about, like, cabbage and vinegar, just ignore it. Just say, skip, next spirit, please. Thank you for visiting. Ignore that one about the vinegar and spirit. All right, don't worry, Wendy, you'll get it. Anyway, yeah, right, so the, they'll the enter my body. You need a guess, all right? So let's all join hands. You ready? Yes. Okay. Ooh. Is anybody out there? Ethereal plane, spirit, come to me. Share in the quiz seance. We lost a town. Now we've lost an army. No. Keep going. Why don't you knock it off with those negative waves? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. What about this? You have vis visually, you have to look at me visually. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I am going to say Venus of the Body Satchers. That's not my name. Oh. Oh. Are, you, have you are you featured in that film? Puppet Masters. Who? I'm Donald Sutherland. Yes. Oh, oh. Well oh. done, James. Well done. That's oh. Right, I'm going to oh. channel, channel my next spirit. Right, please, please concentrate. This is painful for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm I wet myself. Oh, right. my gosh. Okay. Oh, I wet myself. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a dangerous and unwholesome, and children should not be exposed to you. Mm. Oh, Harry Potter. Okay. Oh, hello. Um, it's what's the name? Uh, oh, Maggie. 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 Smith. Maggie. Yeah, you got it. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. That's a point. Maggie. Now, when, when, did, when did you get that one? Next one. <laughs> Nice song. Oh. Come fool. Come fool. Jackie Chan. Uh. Jackie. Oh. <laughs> oh, my Jackie, Lord. Jackie. 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 Calm down, Jackie. Uh. Oh. Don't come back, my Jackie. Lord. You kick me in the ball and I feel no pain. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Who the hell is that? I think I think that might have been Bruce Lee. Yeah, I can. I can oh, smell, I can, um, I can smell the. Well, I thought um, now you see a trick to me because I thought there were recently dead people. You see, Stratos. No, no, no. I feel I feel an older one coming again. Uh, 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 the master wants you. Throw away your cross. Face the master. Your faith against his faith. Donald Pleasance. Could you do that? Donald Pleasance? No. Oh, I don't know. I was James Mason. Oh! Very good. Oh, from, uh, from, uh, obviously, from Salem's Lot. And then we got last oh, one. What is a one for the money? Two oh, it's Presley! I threw you fake. No. Here it go, kiss corner, don't you? I take on my blue shoes. I take on my blue shoes. I take on my blue shoes. Oh, hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. Apparently, now, not. Now, it's Who Ellie Coulfield. Ellie Coulfield. Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Oh, Thank you very much. Well, that was wonderful. Well, that was a uh, huh? quiz seance. Quiz seance. We were all out there. It was a quiz seance. Quiz seance. Quiz seance. Put your hands together. It's a quiz seance. It just yeah. gets better every year. Come on, every let's wrap year. this up. Oh my God, you two were shy. <laughs> that was so high quality yeah. channeling <laughs> to over to oh, the other work. Right, okay. Brings us on nicely to our second film, Dark Knight the Scarecrow. <laughs> Aired on oh, CBS yeah. on the 24th of October. Oh, look at the date. Uh, in 1981, director Frank D. Felter. Fe Felita? Yeah, Frank D. Felita. Felita. Um, writers, writers J.D. Fergelson. Fiegelson. Um, and also Butler Hancock. 
uh, Charles Durning. Um, oh, oh, I think these are the stars. Charles Durning, Otis. Oh, he plays Otis Hugglerig. And then you've got Reb, Robert F. Lyons plays Skeeter Naris. And then you've got your Curl Claude, sorry, Earl Jones plays Philby. And then Lane Smith, love Lane Smith, Lane Smith. Um, Harless Hocker, he plays. And then yeah. Tonya Crow, Mary Lee Williams. And then you've got Larry Drake, yeah, <laughs> um, uh, for, plays Bubba Ritter. And then Jocelyn Brando plays Mummy Ritter, Mrs. Ritter. Brilliant. Music by Glenn Paxton. INDB gives it higher than um, Let's Scare Just to Get to Death. It gives you a 6.7. Don't know what that means. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> gives it uh, 63. Um, budget. Don't know. It's TV. Opening week. Don't know. Um, it was TV. Spin-off, Dark Knight the Scarecrow 2 came out in 2002. Again, Is it? yeah, same director, J.D. Fiegelson. <laughs> uh, writers, Ray Bradbury and G.D. Fiegelson, set 40 years after the original Dark Knight the Scarecrow. It went straight to DVD. So if you want to see that, go see Barry the DVD Penguin. He'll sort you out, no problems. Should we play a clip? What now? Have you started planting? What? I said have you started planting. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? You ever seen me planting this time of year? No. Well, why do you ask a lame brain thing like that? Well, I just thought it's kind of strange. I mean, if you're not planting, why would you put up the scarecrow? There we go. There we go. Wendy, do you want to give us a synopsis about Dark Knight the Scarecrow? Okay, so there is a snoopy cop who thinks he's something. <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's a postman. Or... He's a postman. He is actually a postman, but he tra- he's got oh. ideas above his station, definitely. Oh, he's a... Don't oh, worry, yeah, but he kind of acts okay. like a policeman, yeah. He acts... So this kind of whatever police postman thinks he's a cop he's seeing this young guy and this older gentleman who maybe have learning difficulties they're having a nice time together and he's sniffing something dodgy and here they go around chatting something happens between and the girl gets into a bit of a riffraff with the dog and the guy with learning difficulty take her back and she looks dead they go and they shoot him down. Yeah. Uh, as he goes away, he said, run to his mummy, mum, they got me, they got me, I'm scared, I'm scared, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, he didn't do it. Mum says, okay, go and hide. He goes to pretend to be a scarecrow. The dog... Wendy, when just they sit arrive, forward a bit for me, please, just for the whole... Oh, when they arrive, him and his bandicoot, so he <laughs> recruits to come and find this this lovely gentle gentleman but like the mice of is it mice of men yeah that's yeah it. mice of men mice of men a guy lovely guy and that's it they find him on the scarecrow and shoot him up mm-hmm. and then the scarecrow then haunts them all killing yeah. them in all fabulous ways brilliant to get yeah, those brilliant buggers back yeah. well done all right so can i tell you my story about why i chose this film why did you choose this film, my love? So, way back in the, in the past, when I was just a lad growing up on a farm, one dark and stormy night, probably around Halloween, my dad got me to watch a film on ITV called Dark Night of the Scarecrow. I Brilliant. think I was about, must have been about seven years old or something. Brilliant. Like yeah. Not but um, bearing in mind, I grew up on a farm with farm machinery, um, mm. Watching this film scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> and then after we'd watched the film, my dad then made me go round the back of the farm. In round the, the back. back. Oh, see, we heard about this last episode. On round the, the back. pigs. And I Can was so fucking scared because it was just like a piece of my life 
And um, yeah, and it was like they made that horror film for me. Um, and it's stayed with me ever since. And you know what? Coming back to it now, I am so pleased. In so many ways, it, it's dated in lots of ways, but in so many ways it stands up and it's actually a very clever film. And yeah. I'd like to talk a lot about that as we go along. But yeah. obviously, I love it. And it's just one of those first films that really kind of set, yeah. set me up for horror, really. And it's a wonderful thing. You you touch on this this thing that we have. Like, those films that you watch when you're young and they disturb you, they mess you up, right? Uh-huh. And they become so beloved and so cherished. You know, they become part of you in a weird way. Why is that? Why is it? Why I feel is like that? Sa- Salem's Lot destroyed me, right? Mm-hmm. That that wow. Danny Glick scratching at the window. When I first saw that, staying up way too late than I should have done, watching that, it blew my mind. And I just adore it now. And I have all my life. Why is that? You know, something that absolutely terrifies. And if you look at all the genre of films, you know, romance, westerns, uh, sci-fi, they all kind of come in and out of fashion. There's always kind of a cycle to this stuff, you know, like the superhero films, yeah, all that. Yeah. It comes in, it goes out. Horror is the only kind of genre that just cuts through it all. It's always there. People are always coming to that scare place. Why do we do that? Well, I suppose because we are, uh, certainly as children as well, always on the edge of being fucking petrified and terrified. <laughs> you know, so we're, I yeah. quite. I, I was. Quite, I was quite happy as a kid. I was quite chill. Oh. <laughs> but, the, yeah. but there are things. But there are things that you do that are risky and scary, and you know, um, you're you're warned about so many things. Whether it's you know electricity pylons or strangers in cars or you know what's out there in the dark or you know, I don't know. It's all those kind I think of fairy it's a stories. It's a release of these these hormones in your body that just could get you yeah. on the edge which is it's yeah. a rush yeah it's a rush which yeah and maybe because we've obviously we've, we've we've built homes and got electric and running water that's relatively mm. quite a young thing from our evolution maybe we've got so many years of like you know at night time being on edge looking out of the cave making sure we're not going to get eaten by something and that's part of us day upon day and because now we don't really have that scale alertness Mm. but I think the thing that pulled me in really as well is the injustice and the wickedness of it so back to the film yeah 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 so you know um seeing that the the guy not played brilliantly I have to say by um what's his name Uh, Larry Larry Drake so Larry Drake's got form in this genre isn't it because you remember where he does the same oh no where's he doing it see it's Ali McBeal isn't it He's not, walk, he's Ali walk in the yeah, he's in Alec McBeal, I think. Oh, I don't know. Or, that, that or L.A. Law. By. No, it's L.A. Law. Okay. I think he's in L.A. Law. I mean, yeah, well, that would make phone. more sense, seeing as though that was around the same time. And Ali yeah. McBeal was like 20 so years he's, later. He's doing the same. What, are we going to go learning difficulties, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bubba has learning difficulties. But he plays it, you know, he's not, you know, when you think that this film was made in what, 1981? 81. So back then, they, <laughs> they, you know, America for TV, they could quite easily have like, oh, my God, done this completely wrong. But to be fair, like, it's all right, actually. They don't you know, yeah. they make a big faux pas with it. He does well. I think he does all right. All right, fair enough. But that injustice, the fact there's a lynching going on there. There's so much in this film, by the way. You know, mm. the f- it's not just a, a schlock horror. Um, the, the, we don't actually see the scarecrow at all until the end. You know, and, uh, and that kind of surprises Well, no, you, me. you do see it far off in the field. Well, you see right? it in a field and stuff like that, but you don't see it doing any of these things. We're not yeah, sure what's yeah, going yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. We've got paedophilia, you know, the guy who, um, yeah. you know, it, that whole underlying current of what he's really up to with the, oh, the little yeah. girl. When, he get, when he's at the um, Halloween fair with, um, do you remember when people used to go bobbing apples? Nobody does that since COVID, do they? Uh, <laughs> but all that kind of stuff, it's that's really sinister. It's, has it got a little bit of witchcraft that in there? Sinister. You know, and it's just very haunting. And then, obviously, all that farm machinery. <laughs> Yeah, all that farm machine. And a postman that in every single scene that you see him, be it sat on the side of his bed drinking whiskey, be it having breakfast, be it 
just I don't know, like <laughs> cotton budding his ears is always in his full postman regalia. Yeah. With, yeah. his hat. <laughs> With his hat. With his hat. And his fucking dickhead hat. Bless oh my his heart. gosh. He, he, he plays it so good. well. So he come on, plays guys, it you, dickhead I haven't heard what you two, honestly, I'll be honest, what did you think of it? Because obviously this is something that affected, um, I'd seen and um, obviously love from Dalton. But coming at it now, what did you think, guys? Wendy. I did get quite tired at the end of it. I did. <laughs> I, I did. Oh gosh, was, it was a. Bit, it was a bit long, but I did. Yeah, it 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 pulled me in quite a lot of different directions. It did pull me. I was very had a lot of different emotions in mm. it, and I was very happy when they were all dying because of what they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first watch for me. So again, thank you very much, Jaime. Beautiful thing. Um, you've got it, it, it's very much kind of that 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 look that aesthetic. It's like a feature length episode of like the A Team or Airwolf or something. It's got that film quality about it, but it's actually done in a, in a, in a really really good way. I mean, I think the acting uh, was compelling. I I liked Bubba straight away. I despised Otis straight away, mm-hmm. um, and I really did feel for him you know when he's like mom mom i've got it she goes do the yeah. hiding game he's like okay i'll do the hiding game it's like it breaks your heart and then they do that thing um but yeah the moment they've done the thing the wind starts coming you yeah. know you've got the supernatural there wonderful but it doesn't over egg the supernatural it's it's just you like we say you literally just get the scarecrow standing way off in the field which suddenly appears at all mm. there well, it could have fun. been. It could have been the little girl at any point, and it could have been the uh, the mum at any point, really. Um, except, you know, we, we it's just, not. We know it's not because it's kind of clear at the end. But, yeah. um, so I found it enjoyable. I did like it. Obviously, it was definitely not as important to me as it is you, but it was. It was a a, a good, nice. Yeah, it's it is actually kind of definitely kind of one of those ones you'd want to bump into at Halloween. You know, you could quite easily like have it on, like as a little snack, if that yeah. makes sense. I've yeah, some, yeah, yeah. I've written something here which I'm not sure what it means, but I put and the Academy Award for being terrified of a boiling kettle goes to. <laughs> Does anyone remember, <laughs> remember that bit? I don't remember that bit. So that was Otis. Oh, that was well, Otis was... when he was in the house. Oh, I mean, he just yeah. he just killed uh, oh, mummy, yes. mummy, Bubba. Yeah, I thought um, he was very good. I thought he played a convincing He's part. brilliant. Oh, I hated him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Dark Knight the Scarecrow was shot in 17 days. Uh, it was originally originally scheduled oh. for 18 days, but a fire cost the crew one day shooting. Um, oh, wow. And all That's the nocturnal cool. scenes, all the scenes that you see at night time, were all shot in one night. The whole thing. What an achievement. Wow. Wow. So that was a tight shit. Who was the director? Basically, yeah, he was managing wow. a tight shit. And just to shout out, the guy I think who dies, is it second? The one with um, the cap, I think. Not the La- Larry. Yeah, yeah, Larry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, by, I think he uh, went on to Larry play. Drake. He went on to no. play. Um, he was in Lois and Clark. That's it, yeah. Uh, you're talking about Lane Smith. Yeah, he's, I, I like him. He's brilliant. So again, like the actors, the, the actors are good. You know, they've got that yeah. charm about them. So you've got him, you know, he, they're part of the posse, aren't they? So he's kind of mm-hmm. like that almost sort of chari- charismatic one. And then you've got like Pasta Man, and then you've got like Petrol Sniffer. And then you've got obviously you've got the postman. So you've got these kind of characters that you kind of follow and see their sticky demises. Yeah. It boasts um, only the second time I've ever seen it on celluloid, um, a death where you're in like a corn in one of those what would you I wanted call to like say yeah the corn, the corn bin the corn tanker um, that is my go to that's the thing I remember mainly about being drowned by that corn because we have one drowned of those kind of corn. you know can, can you name a film where you see that again an- another one yeah after this film <clears throat> got Harrison Ford in it it's got some porridge oats in it I think it's Witness it's a film called Witness oh, I haven't way. seen it I haven't seen it I haven't seen it yeah um, there's a, quite a few plot holes here as well. The fact that the trial happens for, um, for um, while the but the girl still hasn't recovered from the dog bite, so that was <laughs> like two two days later the trial happened. They never found Bubba's body yet. They burned his body. Uh, then they dug it up. I mean that was all over the place. Mm-hmm. 
You don't worry about that. This is Dark yeah, Scarecrow, man. I'm gonna don't let worry it all go. Look, the fact <laughs> they threw it together in that amount of time, and yeah, that's very it worked for what it was. But I thought it did. It wasn't just a shock. It did have other things going on for it, really. Um, and mm. it wasn't till right at the end. And those eyes in the Scarecrow uh, thing was pretty chilly. Yeah, it does yeah, do. Indeed. Yeah, it does do wide the open KPI well, doesn't it? Can yeah. we? Can I? Will I come anywhere close? No. <laughs> I'm I don't think we've got to see the sequel. Yeah, just, yeah. The, so at the, uh, does it happen at the end? I can't remember. We see the eyes again. Yeah, I think we see. Yeah, we see him at the end, don't we? I think there's a shot of the scarecrow at the end. I don't think we see the eyes again, though. Oh, not the eyes again, but we see that freaky child. Oh, she was doing my head to be honest. She was a bit grating. No, I liked her. I thought Did she you? was all right. Yeah. Mm, uh, Shall we rate <laughs> it? Yeah, go on. Let's rate it. Right. Performances. I give it a six. Six. Ah, oh, seven. Six. Sorry. Uh, effect. Seven. Six. Yeah, eight for me, actually. Plot, Wendy. Plot, plot, plot six. Six for me. Six. Uh, rewatch Factor, Laurie. Five. Four. Three. Direction. Five for me. Five. Yeah, five for me. Cinematography, two for me. Ah, oh, see now you you'd be forgiven for missing this, but the backdrop to this film is beautiful. You see all those cornfields and you see all these hills in the background. It's like oh, yeah. shit, that's fucking gorgeous. But obviously they did it like in literally five minutes. They didn't dwell too much. All on right, that well I'll give it four. I'll change my score. <laughs> I gave it four. All right, sound of music, Wendy. Um, five. Four. Three for me. Originality, Laurie. Uh, five. Five. Yeah, five. Enjoyability, seven. Six. Six. A life changing past and present, obviously. It's a big fat ten for me. Nice. Three. It's a five for me. Right, so can I have your scores, please? Oh, it gets fifty-seven for me. It's got fifty-three from me. It's got it's got forty-seven for me. All right, which means it gets a lighthouse rating of fifty-two point three. Where could it be, Heinz? Where could it be? Just over there by the plate, fungus. Right, hey. 52.3. <laughs> well, it's on its own. And it is in 97th place, just below <laughs> Critters and above the grey. So there we go. It Not nailed bad. it. Not bad at all. So, Wendy, have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, it's really great Thanks. for being here. Thank you. Because you've got oh, to leave it's been now. A pleasure. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll we'll sort you out some sort of raft. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Folks we... are gone. So we've got like some drinks. Give me some films to watch on the way. Yeah, Brian, not whatever he called you, Laurie calls him, our DVD penguin will stock your raft with a number of films for the journey. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you can come on the show again with any luck. They just have to get caught down the hole again. Get stuck in Wyndham's hole. All right, so... So so bear with me, bear with me. That will bring us to the conception of our Halloween spectacular, James. All right? Yeah. Except, you know, we have to choose for that side, by the way. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Again, if anyone has been affected by any issues covered in this episode, we have links to support lines (laughs) on our Facebook and Twitter pages. So please go there. So, what do we have in store for our next episode? Shall we consult James Ballbag, James's Ballbag? Yes. So or I, so the Wheel of Destiny? The Wheel of Destiny. I'm going to let Wendy leave, though. Oh, Otherwise, Because okay. if she doesn't leave now, she'll never get past the tide. It's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, there's a rough... Bye, yeah, Wendy. Bye, guys. I'll see you on the raft. See you later. Right. Okay. Right, so shall I spin the Wheel of Wonder? 
Either that or you dig, you dig deep it. in your it's ball bag. It's right away. All oh, right, okay. And we have got... 1990. The movie lighthouse. Shining a light through the fog of film. Okay, so we're back. So, 1990. All right, so what we're going to do is offer up a couple of films each, and then we're going to, um, the other person gets to choose which film to cover. All right? Yeah. So, yeah. the first one I'm going to offer up is, oh, I see I've got four here, but I'm going to go with Jacob's Ladder. Right. What are you going to offer up? I'm going to go for Peter Blatty's Exorcist 3. Oh, okay. All right. And then I thought I'd do something a bit. Uh, and then I'm uh, going with Wild at Heart. Oh, yes, you good boy. That was my second choice. Okay. All right. Um, shall I choose it? Have you got another, shall I choose another one then? No, no. And that doesn't. I'm, I'm, right, I'm so we're going to go with, we're definitely going with Wild at Heart, aren't we? Yeah, amazing. Now, Jacob's Ladder or Exorcist 3, I 100% think we should go Exorcist 3. All right. Well, I'm with you. That'll do. Yeah, brilliant. I've been me, and I've been you. See you later. Yeah, bye. <laughs>